Hey guys, Tony Smith with Denison Yachting. Today we want to share a very cool new vessel that is available. This is the Yacht Support 53 by Domin Yachting. So as some of you may know, Domin has been in the business of building these support vessels for a long time and they recently just changed the game uh, to make some really great improvements with the Yacht Support 53. Now they do have larger versions of this and we can talk about those later, but today we're going to focus on the new 53 model. Now, really, these boats are about supporting your dream in yachting. And a lot of people are into adventure travel. They want to have the toys, the tenders, helicopters, submarines, uh, jet skis, landing craft, all of that. And oftentimes, you don't have enough room on the primary yacht to be able to facilitate that. So that's where the yacht support vessels come into being. Now, what we've seen is that Domin's actually changed this up a little bit, and these vessels are actually luxurious enough that they can be the primary vessel as well. So we're gonna go through the different cabin configurations. So you can have this either as a purely support, partial support, or as a self-contained yacht in itself for adventure travel. So looking at some of the things that you can do with these yachts, you know, a few things that we've seen uh, people implement, and there have been over 20 of these implemented already, is obviously having larger tenders. Uh, so having a full like 40 foot support boat on board that you may not be able to have on your primary yacht or have that and other things. So obviously uh, jet skis and water toys, and now people are actually doing um, aircraft as well. So you can do an aircraft, they have a float planes now that have the wings that fold out and you can have those mounted on the back of the Yacht Support 53, so very cool. And then there's another option as well to actually have a submarine. So many primary yachts obviously don't have the facilities to do a submarine. These have the submarine facility as well as the ability to land helicopters on the back of these vessels. So where we see these being very, very popular is if, if say if uh, a family is traveling to a regatta and you've got uh, you know a sailboat and a sail race and you need to have room for the crew or your race crew uh, to be ready to go, the yacht support could be one of those roles where it could be uh, availability for the crew itself of the actual racing vessel and supporting that mission as well as supporting the owner of the racing vessel while they are entertaining guests and everything either on board the yacht support or their primary vessel. Um, a few other things that we want to point out about Domin. So Domin is headquartered in the Netherlands. And again, they've been building these vessels for over two decades. So Domin has a rich heritage uh, dating back close to 100 years and they have over 35 different shipyards. So again, this is nothing new for Domin. They build military craft, craft like this in the yacht support as well as they own the Amels brand of luxury yacht as well. So really an outstanding team there and a very reputable firm in Domin. So a few technical facts about the boat. So this design is 175 feet long. It has a beam of 30 feet. It has a top speed of 19 knots. And you can have uh, guests between six and 16, depending on how you have the layout. And that's all while accommodating a crew of 10 plus the captain. Um, again, another main feature of this is the hoist on the back. So you've got an option to add an A-frame if you had uh, the submarine and wanted to have an A-frame lift up and lift down. And then you do have your, your primary uh, winch as well. And so that deck crane uh, is actually had both the A-frame and the deck crane have a 33,000 pound capacity. So very capable with you know the standard deck crane, but then if you do want the A-frame, you can add that as an option. Um, you have deck space of over 2,700 square feet for boats, toys, and vehicles, whatever you wanna put onto the back of this. And again, it can be interchanged out depending on how you want to configure it for that particular mission. Um, and you can have chase boats and tenders up to actually 53 feet here. So the interior of the boat, so in the 53, there's the evolution from the 55, they've actually given you a lot more higher quality uh, options to finish out the interior. And so you can bring a custom interior designer or you can work with the uh, interior designers there at Domin to really set up the dream that you want. So 
in this, uh, you know, talking about the, the luxurious lifestyle, some changes that they've made. So in your main lower salon, you have a, a lounge area there. It has large windows in it, and that's those are actually full height for the glass uh, to, to really let the inside and the outside flow together. It has a very clever dumbwaiter system. And so the dumbwaiter connects down to the lower deck where you actually have the full galley down there. Uh, you have the option for either a passerelle off the back or alongside boarding options. You have nice transom underwater lighting, and then you have options to add solar to even further reduce emissions. Now, again, this is a very functional vessel. Uh, very crew friendly. So it has a uh, fixed bridge wing stations on both the port and starboard. So when you're docking the vessel, uh, you can very easily, the crew can very easily do that. Um, it has separate crew entrance. So just like a proper yacht, the crew entrance can be separate from the guest entrance. And then it has a large uh, mess down below. So it has a large crew mess. It actually has workstations there a full-size laundry, and then it's got serious area for stores, provisions, and logistical supplies. So we're gonna go through some of those specs a little bit later on this. And again, um, a few features about the, the comfort of the yacht in cruising is it has a very stable hull design. It's designed for extremely low noise and vibration. It does have zero speed stabilizers, as well as it has a full water-cooled exhaust with underwater uh, exhaust outlets. So very innovative uh, there. Um, up on the bridge deck, so the bridge deck itself has uh, 323 square feet and that includes a sky lounge indoor seating within the wheelhouse itself. Again, we talked about the fixed uh, wing stations on either side and you have a full, from the wheelhouse, a full 360 degree view around so you can see what's going on. Um, to the aft of the wheelhouse, you have 1,238 square feet in a, uh, a bridge salon area there. And then behind that, you've got some al fresco dining so you can have a large um, outdoor table and that has a shaded area. Up in the four peak, you have uh, twin electric uh, windlasses for the anchor. Um, in the aft station, which is your operational work deck, again, you've got the cr primary crane with uh, 33,000 uh, pound capacity, and it has an extension out to actually 10 meters. Um, the exterior has a deck of 2,100 square feet in that area. There's a swim and boarding platform that's 237 square feet, and it has a dedicated capstan there if you need that to uh, help you uh, winch the boat into the dock or bring other uh, you know, tenders or other things in, you've got, do you have a power capstan there. Um, there's an integrated passerelle that again be, can be out the aft or can be utilized for alongside boarding. And then the whole deck has uh, container fittings and attachment points. So however you want to uh, configure this, um, you're, you're nicely set up there. On the main deck, um, this is where you have the guest accommodations. And again, it can be set up between six and 16 guests, depending on how you have that configured. Um, and we've got all the deck layout, so we can go through all of this with you. Uh, the main deck interior is 1,292 square feet. Again, there's a uh, pantry area with the dumbwaiter that goes down to the lower deck. You have a day head there. And really the, the main owner's suite will be on the main deck, uh, but we can shift that around into a couple of different configurations depending on how you want it. And then again, the lounge has really nice uh, dining area as well as the large windows and access to all the uh, guest quarters. Um, on the aft deck, you know, some things that people would look to do would be that 53 foot primary day cruiser. Uh, it could have a work boat on there. You could do a wakeboard boat. Um, you could have four Sea-Doo's stacked up two by two. And then a, again, you could have um, your uh, submarine and uh, other facility there. Let's take a quick look down below. So down below in the crew area. So we actually have crew accommodations uh, for up to a crew of 10 and that's in six cabins. So it'll have four doubles and then two officer cabins. Uh, the lower deck has an area of 1,292 square feet. Again, it has a separate crew mess area with the pantry. And then uh, we talked about the provisions a little bit. This actually has a cold and freezer storage of 65 square feet. It's got another dry storage area 
um, of 75 square feet. And then all your AV racks, entertainment, linen, laundry are all down here as well. When you go uh, beyond the, uh, the crew quarters to the aft, again, you have another laundry station there, then your chief engineer office, you've got stairs up to the top, and then you have the mechanical space. We're gonna talk about power a little bit. Uh, later, this is actually has two Rolls-Royce MTU motors um, and two generators in that area. And then behind that, you have a beach slash storage area. So the really cool thing is the aft area can be configured if you want to have it as a beach club or if you want to like really trim it out or you could have it as a dive center, you could have it as a pure technical area. There's a day head and changing area and this is on the lower deck. Um, so really fantastic use of space and really we can configure it any way that you would want and there are build slots available so they're building hull number one that's spoken for actually to an owner that owns another uh, the previous version of this he's going with the 53 uh, for his mission but there's a uh, hull number two currently available and then again we're going to just touch on the customization of the boat so it can be really set up to realize your dream for your mission. So whether it's its own self-contained primary boat or it's truly a yacht support vessel to a larger yacht uh, that allows you to have more overnight guests, more crew, more toys, you name it. This is all about what your dream is and how you wanna support that dream and explore with this boat. And then let's talk about Domin a little bit. So Domin is a family run and operated business. Um, it's actually managed by the third generation right now. So over a hundred years of yachting experience. And a lot of that has really changed. I listened to the story the other day, they completely rebuilt the company after World War II. And they did a lot of that um, with uh, navigation type boats and infrastructure type boats. They went into uh, uh, military boats um, and then they built these very rugged and industrial boats and they, they've acquired uh, different yards over time including Amel which really brings in the luxury brand as well so we were talking other videos about the Amel 80 and the Amel 60 and then uh, there's a few other designs as far as the uh, Sea Explorer which are actually like an Explorer version so it kind of goes from this yacht support into the luxury even further so we'll do a separate video on that but um super impressed with the Domin uh, family and company and it is run as a family business and at Dennis and Yachty we really love that um, the Domin organization has over 35 different shipyards now and has launched over 6,500 vessels with all shapes and sizes. So very impressed with the Domin family and really how they're able to support your dream with this. Now, a lot of people ask about the support of the support yacht. <laughs> so uh, a nice thing with Domin, with having all the different shipyards, both the industrial and the luxury is you really have a worldwide global support network with Domin. And so that allows you to more easily manage the vessel, have different support areas. And then another interesting thing that they're doing is they're in the world of IoT or Internet of Things. So all the boats will actually be connected uh, through either cellular or satellite data systems and remotely Domin will be able to tap into your boat and diagnose different systems and could give you uh, some advice on things while you're in the middle of the ocean. So very, very interesting uh, ability to do that. A few things about the spe specifications again. So this is a volume of gross tonnage of about 499 gross tonnage. It has the top speed at 19 knots cruise speed at 12 knots and at that 12 knots you've got a 5,000 nautical mile range so a very capable boat to certainly get out and extend a cruise and cruise in remote areas um, it is built to class so it's built to uh, the Lloyd's registry class it can be flagged um, however you like but it is built to the uh, Marshall Island standard um, we could get this built as a MCA Maritime Coast Guard Authority for chartering if you do want and again your guest accommodations you're between six and 16 guests, depending on how you want to build it out and configure it. You can have a crew of 11 in addition to that. Um, fuel capacity, you've got about 41,000 gallons of 
uh, diesel fuel. So very capable there, about 8,000 gallons of potable water. And again, obviously we'd order it with water makers. Those water makers are normally twin water makers with about 1,136 gallons per day. So can certainly uh, do that. And then for protected areas, you have gray water. So any of the shower water and all that could be stored on board. Um, it has about 8,000 gallons of gray water. And then it has a black water holding of 819 gallons and a black water sludge of 423 gallons. So why that's important is if you're into uh, different Arctic areas and you can't, um, you know, if you're in protected areas and you can't release any uh, treated sewage or anything like that, and you need to be entirely self-contained, this vessel can do that for you. Additionally, the vessel has uh, onboard gasoline for the tenders and other things like that. So it has a integrated 528 uh, gallons and actually a fuel pump there. And then this one is powered by, again, the Rolls-Royce MTU motors. And these are about 3,000 horsepower each. So you've got over 6,000 horsepower on this boat. Now, what I like about this configuration with the two motors, on the previous version, it actually had four motors. And you may think that's nice, but with the four, it's a lot more maintenance. So I really like that they've reduced it from the four down to the two primary engines. Um, your generators on this, it has twin 245 kW Caterpillar generators. You have a bow thruster of 202 kilowatt capacity. And then again, this is a global uh, a global machine, so it actually has the shore power converter. And why that's very important, a couple reasons. If you're in remote areas, you may have power that's 220 or 240 or 50 hertz or 60 hertz. You don't really know what you're going to get. With the shore power, you can actually plug in anywhere. And why that's very important, sometimes if you're traveling in remote areas, they'll have voltage that's way low. The shore power converter will actually step that up to what the boat's happy with. So again, you can plug the boat in anywhere. And then shore power converters also provide you protection. So if there's a power surge in the uh, in the grid somewhere, shore power converter will give you additional protection. So it's really nice that the boat comes integrated with that. And again, it really shows how they're thinking of global uh, industrial use with this boat. Um, a couple optional things that you can have is the helipad. So you can have a proper certified helipad uh, with a rating of 8,150 pounds. That's 3,700 kilograms. And that can be a certified helideck as well. So if you have it as certified, the first option is a touch and go helipad. The other one is actually a certified helideck and that has a loading of up to 11,000 pounds. That's about 5,000 kilograms. You can have a optional hangar on board the main deck. So you can have a hangar for aircraft or submersible uh, submarine. You do have that A-frame um, option again uh, to launch in addition to the main primary crane that you have. And then you've got a swimming pool option that's modular and that can be set up with an outdoor lounge and barbecue. So really versatile how you can configure this boat and set it up. So let us know what your thoughts are and how you would configure your Yacht Support 53. If you're in the market for a Domin or Yacht Support or really any luxury, either Explorer boat, support yacht like this, or traditional luxury classic boat, please feel free to reach out to us at the information below. On behalf of myself, Tony, and the rest of the team at Denison, Thanks so much for checking out the Domin Yacht Support 53. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Let us know what your thoughts are down below and stay tuned in for the next video. For additional information, please feel free to email me at ts at flyachtpro.com. Also, please feel free to text me at 404-805-9819.